there's the new Pandango one that came out about three years ago. So. This was one that Jerry likes to use. Can you speak up a little bit, Jerry? Jason? It's my favorite. Yep. 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 Where I go. <laughs> where you go. Where I go. This let, her open, let her open her nail pull everywhere. This here is a J hook <laughs> style. Yeah, These are pretty cool. And another one made by Man Lake. So people even use paint scrapers. <laughs> Looks like he could make this out of a shelf stander. Or shelf stander or stander. <laughs> So these things are, not only do you use them on your frames, but they're great for chopping blackberries out of your way, you know, that are next to your hive, pulling hornets, ants. All great for pulling off a stinger, too. Oh, yeah. That. Hey, you'll see the little duplex pump going for it. So the sooner you can get that out, the less venom you're going to get stuck in you. Has anybody here not got stung? We can fix that today. Yeah. What's that one? You, you not been stung? Oh, okay. So what like Ted just said about the way the stinger works. And that bee stings is barbed, so it walks off of it. It's got a little pumper that pumps that venom in you. So you want to try to get it out of there fast. Still hurts no matter what, how fast you get it out. So, let's look at this. The width right here, and the width right here. This is the same as this high tool. Yeah, there's reason for that. That is the width at one frame. Exactly, it's hard to see through the Oh, it'll be 20 years, yeah. yeah. So that's with the one frame if you're going to be 20 years. So J-hook style, if you're good inside of a hive, some people like to have their frames pushed all over to one side, some people like to spread them out evenly. But with the J-hook style, you go ahead and, and you uh, break the frame loose from the propolis on the other ears. And you take this J-hook here, go down in between, lift up, like so. And lift the top right up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then pull out a frame. Right? <laughs> With the J-hook, you got to be careful when you do that, especially when there's lots of propolis, because you can actually separate the top wire from the side. That's what you may. So be careful when you use the J-hook in that manner. I just think that might be something. Yeah. The commercial frames, are they glued and? Uh, some of them are. I glued mine. Yeah. Uh, Man Lake, they, they do blue theirs. If you catch some from Man Lake, I don't know about some other companies. Did Jerry say too he has like struts and he tacks on the top? Yeah, he's not glued at all necessarily for them. Yeah, we're so good. Our purple is from the yeah. Yeah. I think it's something like a little metal piece. Yeah, it's a metal, it's a metal bar that you put on that. Getting that angle, getting through the wood, you're not catching a lot of wood. Yeah, catching that. Uh, the new one here, you see it right in there. It's supposed to get right up in the top bar like so and then wedge it up so you can go in and pull out a frame. Does someone have a pad on that? I'm sure they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of these are new. These tools have been out for a long time. Uh, this one here, if you want to get in there, go and break the frames loose. I always like to start on the outside frame first because if you go and uh, if you try and uh, take a frame out that's more towards the, the center, you don't know if there's a queen on there, and you don't want to roll the queen once you pull the frame out. So I always like to pull out the outer frame or and, and get that out of the way. That way I have some room to go ahead and manipulate the other the, the other frames out of the box if I need to. So pull that out. Now we have some room so that we can pull out a frame without fear of rolling a queen and killing or damaging it. When you say rolling, you talk about the motion of sort of wheeling it out. You're, you're bringing her up, you're bringing the frame up, and your queen is actually rolling on the frame due to contact between the two frames, especially if you have drone cells on the bottom. Drone cells on the bottom will shoot out a little bit further. As you bring that up, if your queen's on there, it'll scrape her right up against the other dome on the opposite frame. Okay. You don't want to kill your queen. So I'm trying to give yourself a little bit of room if you want to pull out a frame. That way you don't injure your queen. What the bees are going to always do, they're going to always, in the center, or all throughout the frame, and you can't see it, they'll do bridging. Or just like Jason said, they'll do a lot of, on the bottom of it, they might put, there may be queen cells down there, there may be drone cells, but it'll be thicker. When you put those in there, you're only about a three-eighths of an inch apart. 
when you have eight, nine, ten frames in there, especially you guys will be starting out with foundation, so you have ten frames. And uh, they're going to fill that in. They want to be walking back and forth in that. So what Jason said, you always take that outside frame out. Typically, there's not going to be any bees on there, very few. And that gives you, you can pull your frames apart and give yourself another an inch. Mm -hmm. You can look down there and see your bees and roll, bring it out so you don't roll your bees up, make them all upset. Why is it? Why is the drone cone taller? Because it's big. Because drones are bigger. Fatter. Bigger. Yeah. Okay. They'll stick out like little bullets. That's why they got the name drones. They're just drone around. They're fat. And they just eat <laughs> honey and lazy. Are there any top bar people here? Hold up your hands if you're interested. Um, we can talk about that later. This is absolutely essential with top bars because you don't got any clearance on the top of that thing at all. <laughs> you really want to get end comb open first before you go anywhere else. Jason, don't you use a follower board uh, in yours? Yeah, I use follow boards on some of my colonies on that the outside here. Instead of having 10 frames, I'll run 9 frames and have a follower board on the outside right here. That way I don't have to worry about comb bridging over. And I could just pop the follow follower board over and pull it out. And then I've got all the room I need to walk to go ahead and manipulate the nine frames there. Oh, the board is just the top piece. No, a follower board is this way, solid. It's a solid board that goes in there. And it's the any width that you want to make it. It's just a solid board. Oh, yeah. uh, and it rides on. Uh, so rather than having a foundation in there, you just have a board in there. Oh, thank yep. you. Yeah, just like that. That's a follower board. Right here. So instead of having 10 frames, I got nine. I got my follow board right up against it. You know, otherwise you can get some burnt comb in here. So I have nine frames. Just here. Yeah. I run nine frames. Got a follower board up there like so. Give them their piece space between the follower board and the frame. So they draw out this comb just fine on this frame. And if I want to get in my box, you know, I just go like so. I pull out my follower board. If you leave that much space open in your box, they will get very creative with the way they put the comb in there. And you will not like it because you'll have to break it all and they will not like it because you'll be, they'll be breaking their comb. So if you want to if you want to leave that much space, make sure you have it walled off so the bees and get in there. So some other ways, you're going to find that it's a challenge, especially in a very strong colony, to pull out the very first frame. So that's why you want to go ahead and break it loose from the sides, break it loose from the other frame. Uh, this one here, you saw the J-hook go ahead and pull out the frame from the side. I'm using this method, right? So you got to be careful with that. With this one here, you just go and jab it in. You know, the corner right here, you can pop it up like so, okay? Then you pop this one up, then you go and use the side of the box, go ahead and hold the frame over while you move your hand over and pull out the frame. Alright? Now, these things are also used for cleaning out your boxes and your frames. Eventually, you're going to start losing your B space because you like to build up the propolis along the edges here. As you pull out frames and put them back in, the propolis builds up on the, on the sidebar here. So these are used for cleaning up the sidebars to get your, your B space back. Otherwise, this one here is running out of B space already. So is that normally what you're doing whenever you open them up, the no, scrape the side? Not every time. You know, you'll know when it's time. <laughs> it you basically get when like you can't that. pull a frame out it's really tight, <laughs> it's time to do a little bit of cleaning. Um, and these are also used for cleaning the sides of the boxes right here. This, this tool here is better than a J-hook as yeah. far as cleaning out the rest. It gets right in there, cleans it out nice, nice and sharp. Uh, you'll find a lot of propolis builds up in these areas right here too, and, and this is a great tool for, for pulling that out. This one here, I find that I gotta go like this, and it's, it's a little bit harder to go ahead and go in the sideways are actually trying to clean this out. And you use something like this where you can just pull it through. And Get the out. Well, this is an active colony, and you're pulling your out like that, and you're cleaning your box. You your and <laughs> okay, so we're going to pull out the first frame. There's different things that you can do with the first frame. We have what's uh, it's a commercial uh, instrument called a frame rest, and we have it here. And it actually sits here on the edge of your box and you can put your frame right here and just hold it. Right. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Nice little frame rest right here. You can put that right there. 
I, I don't have a frame rest. Uh, it's just an extra tool that I have to carry out to the yard. Oh, so I'm uh, on the ground up against a box type of person like that. And and when you do that, you got to be careful that you don't step on it. So you got to be aware where you be aware of where you put your frame. It's a, it's big. Yeah, you're yeah, about carry your stand near the top part. You got to you got to put them Okay, so you could have it, you know, it's kind of difficult to tell which box she's in, unless you've been in it recently. Uh, there, there are some indicators as to how the beads act on the front porch, but where they're fanning at, primarily at, that's the general area where she's supposed to be in the box. Well, it depends what you're doing, you know, what, what your inspection is for. You know, if you want to look at your queen, then yes, you want to pull it. Look at your queen, oh, she's pretty and come back. I, most of the time when I'm in a box, I don't even look for a queen. I just look for eggs, make sure she's laying really good. Look for cat brood and make sure that the cat brood is emerging and that it's free of any mites and, uh, and fowl brood. Yeah, if you, if you look at your frame, if you see a solid pattern of eggs, I don't need to find a queen. Unless I'm doing splits, in which case then I need to isolate the box and try to find a queen. Um, the, uh, the other thing with this hive tool is to separate the two boxes. You will find with uh, colonies that build up very strong that they will go ahead and make some burr comb between the two boxes, between here and here. And if you were to come in and just do one of these numbers and pop it loose on, on what, you know, two, three, four corners and try and pick it straight up, you're going to be pulling frames out from, from the bottom box. You don't want that. You're going to be holding this box and you're going to have one, two, three, four, five frames hanging out on the bottom of this box and that is not a pretty sight. No. <laughs> also, when you do the lift, you have to push it down, you do? all the lift will come out. So what you do, oh, you kill about 20 at a time. <laughs> is that if you want to pull this top box off to inspect the lower box, I like coming in here and lifting up and push, pushing down on the box, that way it uses the angle here on the hive tool. So get in here, lift this up just a little bit, push down on the box, and I'll separate the, the two boxes at where the bird is, all right? And once that separates a little bit, then I like to give it a twist, make sure it's completely separated, and I'll go ahead and pull the box off. And what I do do is I do clean up the comb, any petunia comb that's coming away out here, I do clean that up because I don't want to smash bees or a queen. And while you're doing this, you're using your smoke too. When boxes. you're cracking them boxes, you're smoking down in between the boxes, you're smoking down your frames. Like Jason had it tipped up there, you want to smoke it before you, when you scrape it, you don't want to scrape all your bees up. Yeah. So there's there's two different types of inspections that I use. One is a thorough and one is a not so thorough inspection. Thorough inspections are when you go in there and you individually look at a handful of frames. You're either looking for your queen, you're looking for a disease, you're looking to see if you can see infrared mites on the bees. You know, that's a thorough inspection of going frame by frame, <coughs> one box or both boxes, okay? When you have so many beehives, you only need to do a thorough inspection maybe once or twice a year to see what's going on with your box. You make sure your queen's laying good, make sure you don't have any foul brood diseases, uh, and that the mites aren't getting to them too bad. Uh, the not so thorough inspection is one that you go into the box and you want to make sure that they're not going to swarm on you. Okay. And what you do for that inspection, it's real easy. So we get in there, lift this up a little bit, give it a little bit of a twist, like so, give them some smoke, pull this up, the upper box. Bring it over here, put it up on end, like so. You got your smoke here, you smoke the bees up, okay? When you do an inspection, you don't have to pull out frames. You don't have to look down through the top. You can if you want, but the easiest way is to do it from the bottom here. And you smoke the bees out of the way, and queen cells are vertical cells that come out, they look like a peanut. And if you start getting some aggressive queen cells in there that are pretty good in size, then you have you know, some cause to worry that they might swarm them in the future. But you smoke the bees up here, look for queen cells on the underside. And you can actually take your hive tool, or you can take your fingers, 
and you can move these frames a little bit, and you can actually see a cat removed. You know, you can see cat removed in the frames, you can see pollen, you can see honey, and you're looking for queen cells to make sure that they're not going to swarm on you anytime soon. Now, if you do not see queen cells in this box, swarm cells, swarm queen cells which hang on the bottom of the frame, if you do not see them in your upper box, about 99% of the time you will not see them in the lower box. Because this here is the, their favorite box to put queen cells in. Okay. So if you don't see them here, then hey, you're done. Box back on. The inspection is done in less than a minute. Okay. And if you see them, if you see queen cells, then you have to look at what stage they're at. If you have a queen cell, then you've got to determine whether they're still in the box. If she is, it's time to do a split real quick. Get her out of there with two frames of fruit and the dairy cheese. Put her in a new box, fix the cheese in there, and take care of that split. Then you've got to look at what stage they're at. And from there, there's a different management just to go ahead and try and get a good queen right again. What you don't want to do is leave all the queen cells in there and you're just going to have to have to swarm it away. So uh, the best way to do it is just leave one or two cells in there and leave off the rest. Find the, the one or two best cells and leave them in there and the box back together. Yeah, but that's not the way I like to do it because now the whole colony is going to keep that one queen, keep it going. If she doesn't make red she has to go back and leave the whole colony. So there's different methods to go ahead and cover it. That's another class. <laughs> How are we going to know these things? <laughs> hey Jason, you don't, you don't check the bottom box? Hey, you already did the bottom box? What do you do to reassemble the hive? <laughs> Put the colony back together. So, if you're going to do a thorough inspection, you want to go ahead and do this box first. Why is that? That's where the bees will be. Hmm? That's where the bees will be. Oh, they're in both boxes. Why do we want to do that one first, the bottom box? That one back on top. So, there. <laughs> so, so we take this box off and put it over here. Because the majority of the bees are going to be down there. Exactly. Uh, they're going to be down there because you're going to have field bees coming back. <coughs> and that pretty soon that colony is going to be, I mean that box is going to be boiling over with bees while you're over here messing around with this one. So if you're going to be doing a thorough inspection, you want to take care of this box here first, get it out of the way, and then go ahead and move on to your second box. Otherwise, if you do this one last, then you've got a whole bunch of bees that you've got to contend with to try to get your inspection. More than will fit in the box that you can't smoke them down. So when you pull one frame out, do you just leave one frame out and move and slide them back so you, as you inspect so that the queen stays in? Well, so you do that, you don't damage the queen. Right. 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 Now, just do it. Now, another uh, the other really use for the hive the tool is uh, I forgot to mention is that when you put your frames back in, it logs in five minutes. Let's say you're, you know, you got a ton of bees on here, and you want to put your frame back in. You go ahead and put your frame back in right here. What you're going to find is a whole bunch of bees like to gather right here, right where you want to put your frame back together. They're going to gather right between the two frames. So what I like to do is bring it up close and take my hive tool and put it in there. Wiggle the bees out of the way. Then you push this up against the hive tool. That's smaller than bee space, you're not going to get any bees in there while you have that space there. And they don't like it, like it when you do that, so some will follow you up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, come so you do that and then you can bring it in tight. Uh, Another reason yeah, why you yeah. do the bottom box first is because it's bending over corner. gets to be really old and gets heavy when you're doing that. So I start on the heavy box first and then put the top box on. Then you're standing more upright. Oh, there he is. So reassembly, uh, George was uh, asking about the Let's go make sure that the comb is clean right here. You don't want to crush any bees. Then you go to put it back together. Make sure the comb is clean off the top bars right here too. Uh, use your smoker to drive the bees down so that you can get your, your uh, hive tool in there. And take care of the comb. And then when you're ready to assemble the two boxes together, if you have any bees that's along the outside edges, you know, uh, clumps of bees here and there, take your smoker, drive them away, Get them away from the edges of the box. Same thing up here, just drive them away a little bit with your smoker. Grab your box, bring it over here. What I like to do is come over here, uh, 
little uh, I don't corner like so. so. Okay, and just wiggle, wiggle it down like this. So the bees don't get out of the way once you get close and you start wiggling it. And once you're at this point, you just And they'll kind of glue it back together with the pork. Oh, yeah. yeah. They'll glue everything together. You'll have it all the way in. Whatever you mess up in there, they'll fix it. Oh, yeah. So when you have both boxes, you know, you have a lot of bees and they're in both boxes. Do workers, when they go out, do they come back to the same area in the hive, either upper or lower foundation where they were working? Mm -hmm. Or do they just come in and then someone says, now you need to go over here and work? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but what we do know for sure is that you have enough workers out that if you leave that bottom box alone, pretty soon there are more bees than will fit in that box. And so your smoke will be to no avail if you sit there for 20 minutes while everybody comes back in and you will and you'll have so many bees in that lower box that you can't do anything with it. And so that's why you want to work the lower box right away before I start filling up. The bees tend to work in short groups, so they know where the brains are that they're putting for. So if you're, if the, the, the forager bees are putting nectar on the second frame, all the foragers will come back and be putting nectar on both the second frames. So the chili workers tend to come and go to the and same they area. In an area. So they start, you know, the colony starts small and they work their way out to the side. So if you've only got, you know, three frames of bees and the foragers, you know, more babies are hatching and they're growing up and becoming foragers, they'll start to fill up this one and the next one out. But then they'll use that as the bird chamber expands. So they're going to be putting stores around the bird chamber to insulate the baby bees. So they'll be working their way out from the bird chamber. And where does, where does the drone go? Is it on the outside or is it on the bottom? If you don't give them a space to put it, they'll put it kind of wherever they want and to. Anywhere they can. Okay. They, they want to grow 20 to 30 percent drone comb. And if you do natural comb, they'll do that. In this kind of situation, they are forced to put in worker comb. And so they put drone comb wherever they can squeeze it in. So you want to be very careful with bee space in these guys because if you leave enough space, They'll just go crazy putting drone comb in there. So if you want to do the drone management for mites where you have a, a separate drone, where would you put that? Number four, number seven position. Everybody knows where that's going. One, two, three, four. Ready, things like that. Flight with story to the point. Either side. That is if you put two in. Put one in, you put in number four, position number seven. I found that it really doesn't matter as long as it's past the second frame, you can do it on the third one. Because this year is primarily your honey frame. This year is honey and pollen, second frame in. Uh, that's what I found out a lot about, is that this year is a pollen frame. Uh, I think Jerry, Jerry's gone, but Jerry finds out the same thing also, that this year is a pollen frame. Yeah, it's usually pollen. And uh, so number four, number seven. I uh, get back to your question about drone comb. Normally it's on the periphery of the frame. Right. But you will find that they'll do it yeah. on a really strong colony, and they will do it between the inner cover and the top parts of these frames right here. You'll see drone comb right here, horizontal, right there. Their, their next favorite place is right between the two boxes. Yep. Right there. So if you want to make sure that your frames are drone, you know, what you can do is go ahead and put in the drone frame inside the box. Mm -hmm. If you get a place to put the drone, then that will keep them from making it on the other frame. Right. So, how does the drone frame differ from the stand? It has larger cells. So, if there is drone foundation, it's green colors, then it sells it up here. You can also make your own. There's one to do with it. You can pull this out, deep frame. You can put a western frame in there. The western frame is the short one, then they'll draw all this in the drone cone. Right there. Uh, the problem with that is that they'll attach that to the top part down below. Yeah, we mix it with that. have inspection. The other way is to take one of these and make your own, which we use for trapping mites. In which case, you put a bar, a wooden bar, right here, about an inch and a half down. The top of the wooden bar is right there. It goes straight across. And this here is all foundation. Then we make all of that. Well, not foundation. I'm sorry. The foundation is up here. Now, there's nothing. We'll make all this drone home right here. And what do you do for your feature hives? Do you do drone management? I do drone management. Yeah. All the mites love to go to the drone cells. And so I go and I pop in a couple of these. I also do queen rearing, so I need the drones for mating purposes. 
So I go ahead and I got drunk home in a lot of my colonies, and once they're capped off, I bring those along with the mirror and bees back to my house for mating purposes. And I just load the mites up on a couple of colonies. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the colonies are nice and clean. But uh, there's anybody subscribe to Yahoo Group? Nobody's on the Yahoo group? No. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're, yeah you're also trying to meet up. There's all kinds of info on there. I've got pictures of drone film and what you can get from right side to the end of the drone. Yeah. Yep, here's your drone film right here. So you use it to... Uh, see how much larger it is. For attract the mites. To attract the mites. And you wait till the cell is capped off. Then you pull the frame out. And with that one there, you would freeze it. And then wait 24 hours and then take it out, take a wax cap and scratcher to it, don't go to cells, put it back in the box and then have a piece pull it out. This method here where you draw the wax progressively, what you do is, once oh, all the drills over the cap off in here, then you just pull this out, cut that out, piece of your chicken, and put it back in. So would you put this in in place of one yeah, of the frames? Yes. Right in the beginning. So you're, so you're using drones as sacrificial bait for the mites? Here's an example of, of a, this is a top bar frame, and you'll see that the, the, these very large cones up here, and the worker cone down here. So this is the drone cone up here, and the worker cone down here. If you had it in a Langstroth lab, they'd do the same thing. If they need to build some drone cone, they will find a space and squeeze it in somewhere, and it'll usually be going crossways to your other Yeah, they like, they like to do a diagonal stripe down the side and top bar. Sorry, I had a question when you were talking earlier about cleaning out the uh, process. Uh, so you're in a box and you make some room down here by removing a, a bar. I get a bunch of them. Then are you going? Yeah, this is always my favorite. Yeah, I can use them. But are you going? Things that won't do.